So in this R20 video, we are going to be looking at the new VDB stuff, which is the volume builder. So it's a completely different way of adding objects together and, a, and a revolutionizes modeling in various different ways, as well as being really useful for booleaning things which is uh, far easier to do than to say, I think. So just really quickly, then I'm going to create myself, you know, my nice bog standard cube here. And now up here in our little scene helper objects, we've got two brand new options, the volume builder and the volume mesher. The first one that we want to be looking at is the volume builder. So what this does, it creates an object, a volume of whatever object you either drag and drop into its little object there or preferably and easy to calculate whatever object it is a child of. So here it does, it creates this wonderful sort of pixelized or in actual fact the technical term voxelized, okay, being a, a volume pixel of our object. And we've got some settings about how big it makes those voxel sizes. So the smaller the voxel, the more of them it needs to create, but the higher the detail. Now Cinema 4D is quite nice is that depending on the quality of your object, if you try and do something ridiculously small, it will say, this is going to take a really long time, are you sure you want to do this? I'll click cancel and just stay currently on my voxel state of one centimeter there. Now voxels are okay, they've got a couple of different states, um, which I shall get to a little bit later. So we've got our SDF, which is sign distance field or fog. So fog creates all of the sort of mists on the inside, useful for other things again, which we will get to. For the moment, I'm just going to look at the signed distance field. So I have an object that doesn't really do anything at this point, and it doesn't really affect its, you know, create much at the moment. But what I can do is I can add in a sphere, which I shall do, and I'll drag and drop that into my same volume builder, and I'm going to get something that starts to create a single shape. Now, there is a nice little setting here uh, when it comes to selecting a sphere, which is a perfect primitive. So therefore, it will stop it from being a faceted object. Um, and just to kind of give you a better idea, I'm just going to go back to my volume builder and I'm just going to increase my voxel size to five so you can see what it's doing, um, which is, you know, it's kind of interesting, I guess, in its own little way. But what if we want to turn that into an object of some sort, um, then what I can do is with my volume builder selected and holding down Alt, which is a nice little R19 feature, I'm going to click volume measure and then that creates a mesh of the volume builder underneath. But this is all still editable, so that cube I can move around and it's you see it's creating that nice seam there and that's all to do with the volumes that it's creating. But something that's really nice about the volume builder here is you've got modes that this sphere can interact on. So we can do union or we can do subtract. And you can see that it is actually a far faster and a little bit more useful Boolean uh, tool because it will allow you to merge stuff together. I can't necessarily guarantee that the topology it creates is going to be pretty, but it doesn't actually too bad a job depending on you know, sort of what you were creating. And so this is the size of those voxels underneath. So if I created larger voxels, then those squares would be bigger, but we'd get a less detail or, or less refined shape. Okay, so that's a, it's a nice little addition, but it can also utilize things like splines as well, which is quite nice. So if I just create myself a circular spline and move that up and make that also a child of the volume builder, you can see, there we go, really quickly, it's meshed that spline based on the, the voxels. So if I go to my volume builder, I've got an option here. I've got a radius um, that gives me control over that particular part differently, um, which means I can create a bigger radius through it. And it creates all of the intervening ge geometry as well. It's something that I really like how quickly and easy it is to throw stuff together and you can you can change a little bit you know you've got settings depending on each one so I've got union in there at the moment but I could do for example subtract and I could create the hollow instead which you know is, a, is an interesting idea 
So just looking at that a little bit further, I'm just going to create myself the cube again, and I'm going to create my circle, move it up there, and then with the two of them together, I'm going to put them in a volume builder, and then I'm going to put that in a volume mesher. Now, it's quite nice to be able to, you know, move all of this stuff around, but you can reuse the same things in the volume builder to reshape without needing extra geometry or material. So for example, if I didn't want this all to intersect, I could create an instance of my circle and put that also in the volume builder. And then in the volume builder, I could use this to subtract um, stuff from the cube. And it depends on the order that you put this in. So if I just increase the size that the instance spline is creating, so that increases the radius. I've now got that hoop going through and I'm creating that hole based on the same spline. I've not needed to create any more actual geometry because I'm just using the instance in the same way. Now, you can also add some reshape layers as well, which I quite like. So I'm going to add a reshape layer in and this is what will do everything above or, or below it or it will do everything, you know, here. So it's in a logical order. So if it's above an object, then it will reshape it. So this will only reshape the cube. Up here, it will reshape everything. And to get the reshape layer working, I'm just going to move it down to the bottom. And then I can look at my filter, OK? And I can look at fields, OK? So we had a little look at fields earlier. Well, what I can do just really quickly is I can add in a random field and what that will do is that that will affect the voxel mesh underneath and I can make stuff look like it's um, eroding. So if I just go to my reshape layer, there you go, you can see that I've got dilate erode. So it will do five centimeters um, if you have it in the positive axis or if I do minus then it will erode. So you can make stuff look like it's being eroded or weathered or things like that and I could, if I put that at the top you can see it will affect all of that mesh in one go. You've got some other options okay so you can close and open the mesh and you can see that that gives you a slightly different effect. Iterations will make it think about the number of times it's going to erode and you can see that if it erodes twice then it will disappear further and so on and so forth so depending on how many times you want it to think about that and you can add in multiple fields here you know and see how you want to get the look of your final voxel mesh what I like about this is just how easy it is to quickly throw stuff together so just, you know, being able to make shapes, throw them in all of this sort of object and know that this is all going to be a mesh that works its way, you know, that, that pushes itself together. So I'm going to, you know, just like quickly throw some things in here that mean that I can start to create interesting shapes and it's, it's really going to be a nice look. If you're trying to create a sort of molded object look, which is, you know, sometimes difficult to achieve unless you've been creating stuff via sculpting, you know, which has its advantages, but can be a little bit fiddly. So I am literally just going to throw this together to see what I can create. Um, out of some of the most basic primitives that I can think of. Um, and just throw that in there, which is fine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in. Let's put that in an array. Uh, it's a bit much, perhaps, um, as I actually only really want two copies. So let's just put the array in there, lower the radius, so it all merges together. But like super quickly I've been able to create oops. 
There we go. That's a bit better. So anyway, what I was saying, super quickly, I've been able to create a little sort of toy rocket idea, and maybe you know, decreasing the voxel size, you know, and you can maybe tweak some of the voxel smoothing ranges. You've got something in there that creates quite a nice little object, like really fast and. You know, you can add in details like splines. So maybe if I wanted to just add a circular spline, change the plane that it was on, make that a child as well. I can just shrink that down. And you're adding detail in super fast. So it might change the way some people model. Oh dear, a bit too far. You know, it might give people a bit of a an easier time with it, you know, maybe I need to just increase that density a tad and that will stop that from going too thin. Um, and you, you're getting a nice sort of look knowing that all of this is, is meshed together and is being treated as one object. So whilst this is a, a little sort of cheesy example of how I can use this, I'm hoping that you guys can see the potential of using this for models and bullying and things like that. I know I've got in my head some ideas of how to make this better and how to use 3D printing to do this. Um, there are some great examples in the content browser. So go away and have a look at those, see what you think and see what you can learn from doing it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk.